At this point in the game, you likely won't make great progress in mechanical skill in CSGO. You can still work and focus on mentality, game IQ, and nailing down particular training methods though. If you've ever wondered how players like Stewie, Simple, and others managed to become the players that they are today, it's all from focusing on these methods and mentalities. They have good aim, but the developments in mentality, training methods, and focus is what truly push them to be their star status. If you're subscribed for tips, this video is going to be the most important video you will watch from us. If you apply these tips, they can improve every mechanical skill and you can become a much better player. My name is Brayden and welcome to Valve Guides. I apologize for the long break in between videos guys. I spent a couple weeks in England recently and I just wasn't able to make any content in that time so I apologize but we are back. No more fluff. Let's get into it. How to actually focus in game. Chances are this is not the first tip video revolving around CSGO that you've ever watched and if you've been taking time to watch videos like this then you probably have enough knowledge to be really good at the game. Most likely the problem you're facing is not being able to focus in game and apply tips and knowledge that you've learned. Truly focus Focusing in game is actually not easy at all, and when you play or do anything for hours, you tend to naturally go through the motions and not even notice it. Even if you're focusing on some things, fundamentals and basics that might be shaky become ingrained habit. We actually have the most focus when we're just learning something for the first time. Think back to when you first learned how to brush your teeth, tie your shoes, or cook something basic like eggs. It was a bigger deal to you in the moment when you were first learning it and you were more careful with everything you did. Now you just open up the game and you play play without even thinking. That feeling of what it's like to learn something for the first time is pretty much impossible to go back to, however with these tips we can get your brain as close to that old feeling as possible. The first tip in this section will be concentrated rapid eye movement. Oftentimes when we play we stare at the screen and slowly check for information, make it a point to look at all the information graphics on screen up and down, look around, and make sure to take in as much information as you can from every end of the screen. Doing something small like this forces you to pay attention on a level you naturally wouldn't. Your brain is constantly having to refocus and a lot of pro players just do this naturally. You can see it in a lot of footage of pro players intently and intentionally scanning the screen. Humans also do this naturally during high risk situations, which is why you feel more attentive during clutch moments. Simply adding more rapid eye movement and taking in that information will help you take that clutch mentality without the added nervousness that you get from being the only one alive. Another way to improve focus is simply coming into the game with a specific plan. If you're anything like me, you often go into a round with a standard route, go through the motions, and wait for something to react to. Whether you're lurking or entry fragging, have a specific laid out multi-step plan that you have to focus on to execute. Never just do something in order to do it. Let's say that you bought an op. Don't just think I'm going to go to my op spot and shoot people if I see them. Think I'm going to move to this advantageous spot, pick off one or two people crossing and rotate to the site of contact. As obvious as this sounds, when we actually get into the game, you'll realize that not many people actually think like this. We instinctively let muscle memory and habit take over. You have to consciously reset your thinking at least every round. Become proactive with your thinking. If you're having trouble remembering this, put sticky notes on your monitor that you will always see even when you don't want to. Unlock the mental flow state. One of the first big research papers ever done on competitive gaming was on something called the flow state. This is sort of an out of body experience that you can feel and it makes you feel like you can't miss and everything you're doing is the correct move without overthinking it. The best research on how to consistently enter this space was done in combat sports like MMA and boxing. It is extremely apparent in these sports. Essentially, flow state can be broken down into three steps. One is to enter the meditative state before playing, where the only thing on your mind is the performance in the match. Now this doesn't mean that you have to cross your legs and hum like you see in the movies, however that can be a way that you do it. You can create a meditative state by making a routine before playing the game. Something like walking to the kitchen, getting a glass of water, and doing some hand stretches the exact same way before you play each game will signal to your brain that you're about to play. And just like a computer can distribute more resources to a program, your brain can distribute more focus onto the game. The second thing is practice chain movements. A major issue we often see in the gaming community is that we only practice moves in isolation, which while important is only half of what you need to practice and won't improve your skills as much as you think. To bring your isolated skills together, you need to practice transitioning these skills back to back. For instance, instead of just practicing headshots, practice headshotting targets walking through and out of common spots on maps. This will force you to chain skills together and something your brain relies on when you enter flow state. Without implementing this type of training, you will only enter flow 
flow states on occasional small instances like hitting a crazy flick shot or pre-fire. Now the challenge, there's the duel and Keddy's gonna win it. He is so sick at that shot. This is why you don't just see MMA fighters practice punching or basketball players just practice shooting. Putting everything together in practice is some of the most important work that you can put in. The third and probably most important tip is inner confidence. As cliche and corny as this may sound, to be able to enter flow state on a consistent level, this has to be the most important part. You ever notice how top level players are usually overconfident in themselves and sometimes a little too cocky? This is why. You have to truly believe in your mind that you have the ability to succeed in high stress situations. A part of this, of course, is putting in the training that we were just talking about. But another big part of this is acting like you put in the hours because you did. We get a lot of complaints of people saying that they did our practice methods but didn't see results. And this likely, but of course does not always, stems from not playing in confidence that you should have from the training that you did. Unlike most situations that require confidence, you can't fake it until you make it on this as being in flow state is something that you can't control once you are in it. But if you start believing in the work that you do, you should gain confidence over time. Practicing mentality needed to improve rapidly. One of the worst things you can do in CSGO is just play play or practice without purpose. We've talked about this before, but the just play a lot method is very ineffective and is a style of training that gives you just as many bad habits as good ones and you're most likely going to get fatigued and tilt. Only practice and play in strict periods of time with a goal of getting better at something. This will give you a structure to your time on the game and will lead to you taking and applying information at a far faster pace. It's the same reason why teachers give you timed assignments. When you practice or perform under some type of timed pressure, you tend to be better after practicing within those restrictions for a while. Dedicate a day or even a week to get better at one or two things and make it your mission to get better numbers in that specific area and the allocated time that you have. As over the top as this sounds, you will realize that once you start doing this, it becomes easier and you will most likely prefer it to any other method of practice. Reaction time isn't exactly what you think it is. This will be obvious for a lot of you, but I've never seen this specifically stated, so I want to just touch on this one just in case. Oftentimes when you see a pro player have an epic reaction time on a play, it's not actually just pure reaction time. They were prepared for something to happen and walked into the situation ready to execute several different moves. You should not walk into a part of a map without understanding the potential possibilities of what could happen. Try to predict where someone could be positioned. Try to predict where someone could be positioned or what they could have based on the information you know you've gained in the map and the economy. Most of those flick shots that you see, while we're not planned specifically, were thought of before entering that part of the map. Thinking on things before they happen creates a massive difference in your performance in any given situation and will minimize moments where an enemy is able to get a jump on you with no time to react. The secret to breaking past plateaus. A big issue you see with long time players is the issue of the dreaded plateau. This causes a massive drop off in skill after a while if not addressed properly. What makes plateauing dangerous is how easily it can discourage you and truly test your commitment. The good thing about a plateau however is that you most likely only have something small to fix. Oftentimes, that small thing is simple fundamentals like aim or game IQ in certain situations. First, you need to identify the root of the plateau. We mention this in every video, but watching your own VODs is the key to this. If you're really stuck, we recommend watching your VOD with a friend who has a near or higher skill level, or even paying a couple dollars to an analyst or pro player who does VOD reviews that will give you an honest take on your game where you can improve. From there, all you need to do is assess what you need to work on your skill. Oftentimes, you actually need to rework the skill or thought process on that skill entirely, as the things that usually hold you back are bad habits you picked up from when you first started playing. We made a video going in depth on how to fix bad habits, so in an effort not to repeat ourselves, we'll leave a link. Take fixing that issue seriously and you will be surprised at how much it will change your game for the better. Something as simple as fixing how and when you peak can literally lead you to winning rounds and games and it only takes 20 minutes to understand. If you play the game a lot and take it seriously, this is a must. This is a continuation on our training tip, but we think it's important to stress that training the little movements such as how you move your mouse, centering your crosshair, finger placement and every other little thing that you see high level players do matters and you should take making those movements good as seriously as possible. The best way to explain this is by looking at a player from a different game. Ben Simmons is a point guard for an NBA team called the Philadelphia 76ers from Australia and is one of the most promising young players in the league. He is a nearly 7 foot tall player who play makes and runs the floor like a smaller guard. He has an extremely high basketball IQ and has nearly everything he needs to be a superstar. He's often called 
called next LeBron James or Magic Johnson. The only thing that has held him back is learning how to properly shoot a basketball. What can't, what you can't gloss over, what you can't get around is a Ben Simmons who attempts 0.13 pointers a game. Because he didn't focus on fixing a fundamental skill in his developing stages and learn the small mechanics necessary to have jump shots, he has essentially hit a ceiling in his development that he can't get past until he learns it. The reason I bring this story up is because we often see the same issues pop up with CSGO players. We receive emails constantly asking us to watch a lot of our viewers' demos to help them improve, and you guys usually have the game IQ required and general skills needed to be really great players. The main issue we almost always see is the little things like improper peeking mechanics, picking up the mouse too much when in a firefight to reset aim, or even simple things like not looking at the ground when you walk around. These little things are holding you back, and if you don't fix them, it won't matter how many throws or jump shots you know as you won't be able to execute when you need to. If you've ever wondered why high level players look so seamless when they play, it's because all these small things were not looked over and were practiced and implemented. They took mastering the small things seriously, and if you do the same, you will become a much better player. How to control situations in game. Most high level players know this, but it's rarely explicitly talked about. Most high level players know this, but it's rarely explicitly talked about as a broader concept, so we wanted to address this. No matter how down you are in a match, you can always technically control the round. We have addressed this in depth in a video before, but to state it in a simple way, to control a situation, you need informational advantage, positional advantage, and the ability to separate individual fights into one-on-ones. To gain information advantage is simple. Take into account who died and where they died on the map. Use your economy knowledge to find out what weapons they may have based on what round it is, as well as things like how close people are to the bomb. With that information, you can figure out where to position yourself. Now comes the hard part. To separate the fights into one-on-one -on -one situations, you need to be patient and figure out where each enemy is on the map and figure out the best approach to get them one at a time. Always keep in mind that the best firefight in CSGO is no fire fight. So be creative and find ways to position yourself where you can hit and not get hit back. Now we are by no means saying that executing and controlling situations is easy. There's a reason why we said technically. The more you focus on this and think like this, the better you will understand CSGO at a higher level and you'll find yourself in better situations sometimes without even thinking. CSGO is a game of position and probability. The best way to understand a game is to understand the game in a broader term than what is shown on the surface level. For instance, to non-basketball players, basketball is a game of points, but for people who love the game and think on a deeper level because of it, you find out that basketball is a game of possessions and efficiency within those possessions. Once you understand the broader concept, you can develop your game around that understanding and become a better player. CSGO is a game of position and probability. As basic as it sounds, most people either overcomplicate the game and then as a result get overwhelmed or look at the game on a much more basic level and never truly learn it. But when you look at the game for what it is, a game of position and probability, you can always look back and know what to do at every point in the game. Always try to ask yourself if you're in a good position and if the probability is high enough for you to be successful at what you're trying to do. Doing this will cut a lot of dumb plays and will naturally put you in the correct positions on the map even if you don't have enough map knowledge. Mindset is everything and to have this as a baseline to always look back on will change how you play the game for the better. Using content from an analyst correctly is the easiest way to earn knowledge. When it comes to gaining the correct game knowledge and developing your CSGO IQ quickly, analysts are the most underutilized tool that give you the most return on time investment. If you want to get better without wasting your time, watch the high level minds break down the game demos. One of our personal favorite content creators to watch are Elma Putty. When it comes to breaking down more core fundamental aspects of the game and Thorin when it comes to the mindset of the game, which is honestly just as important if not more important to learn. There is enough content on YouTube right now where you can look up extremely specific things you want to learn in CSGO and there will most likely be a video on everything. In addition to that, you can even donate $5 to your favorite player streaming and ask how he would approach a certain situation and get it straight from the horse's mouth. We live in a time now where people are giving their experience and information out for free on even the most niche of topics. So take advantage of this and don't just play until you eventually get it. Watch experts break it down and learn 
it the right way the first time and then practice it. Practicing without purpose is a waste of time. If you don't listen to anything else in this video, listen to this. If you enjoy CSGO and truly want to take time and get better at the game, take it seriously. Practicing without purpose is among the worst things that you can do for yourself. When you practice the game, you should focus with the same intensity that you play the actual game with, with the sole goal of leaving the game better than you were when you first started playing it. Recently, a lot of you guys have noticed that we've been taking a lot more sports science approach on our tips, and it's for a reason. Competitive gaming has gotten to a point where if taken seriously, you can change your life, and a lot of you guys have aspirations for this game to do that for you. The issue is a ton of people make the mistake of practicing the game just to go through the motions. They think that as long as they're present that that is enough. To be as clear as possible on this, just practicing to practice is a waste of time and will be detrimental, often only leading you to getting tired and burnt out, getting discouraged due to going into a long-term tilted state. Then you'll think to yourself that you're not good enough and everyone has the potential to perform at a high level at anything as long as your mentality on developing the required skills are good and you acquire the needed discipline to do something long term. Gaming is now as big as what was previously called real sports, yet you cannot go into a generic college and learn about the history and theory behind CSGO, which is why videos like ours will generally help you and your friends improve. That does it for this video y'all. If you enjoyed, a thumbs up always helps. Let us know what tip videos you want to see in the future. It has been a pleasure as always. My name is Brayden. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. Stay amazing and I will see you next time.